President Xi Jinping inspected the Chinese Navy's largest ever military parade in the South China Sea on Thursday. More than 10,000 service personnel took part in the Marine Review along with 76 aircraft and 48 ships, including the aircraft carrier Liaoning and latest submarines. What are the highlights of this military display? Why does President Xi Jinping emphasize the urgency of building a strong navy? And with the U.S. approving the Taiwan Travel Act and a marketing license of submarine technology, how should China respond to the U.S. playing of the Taiwan card? To discuss these issues and more, I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Mr. Teng Jianqing from the China Institute of International Studies and Mr. Xu Qingduo, current affairs commentator. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Pando. Before we get started, let's take a look at this. Over 10,000 officers and troops joined China's biggest ever naval review on Thursday. Chinese President Xi Jinping led the inspection of the nation's naval fleet in the South China Sea. <laughs> President Xi ordered the start of the naval parade at 10 in the morning and greeted the soldiers. Nearly 50 warships and almost 80 aircraft were part of the event. Naval vessels grouped into seven operational formations showed off various capabilities, including strategic strikes, underwater offensive combat, offshore operations, carrier strikes, amphibious landings, inshore defense, and comprehensive security. Planes in ten groups were part of the parade. China's Liaoning aircraft carrier was joined by a series of new submarines, surface ships, and combat aircraft for the review. In a speech, President Xi said the People's Liberation Army Navy must thoroughly implement the CPC's thought on building a strong army in China's new era. Building up a powerful People's Liberation Army Navy is part of the long-cherished desire of the Chinese nation to be a stronger maritime military power and also a significant assurance of realizing the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. All naval officers must pursue comprehensive and deepening reform, be energized in working towards innovation in science and technology, accelerate the Navy's modernization, focus on building a modern maritime combat system, and make efforts to enhance the capacity and level of military missions in a variety of ways. Addressing the 19th CPC National Congress in October, Xi said the modernization of China's national defense and armed forces should be completed by 2035. President Xi called on naval officers to enhance military training and remain on high alert. Xi told soldiers he looks forward to more of their contributions to global peace and stability. After the review, China's leader inspected the takeoff training of four J-15 fighter jets. The J-15 is China's first ever homegrown fighter jet. He also signed on the Liaoning aircraft carrier's ship log at the end of the review of the ship. Paulo Montesilio, CGTN. So, gentlemen, let's talk about the largest ever naval parade in the history of the People's Republic of China. It was conducted mm -hmm. ahead of China's Navy Day, which falls on April the 23rd. And the location mm -hmm. was in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tong, what do you make of the timing and location this time? Of course, the South China Sea has become a very sensitive you know, sea in recent years. And uh, uh, the demonstration or the parade uh, in that area just gave a strong signal that China has already got such a strong you know, navy and China is well determined to defend its national interest and also uh, the maritime interest and so I think the uh, parade or mm. the uh, uh, demonstration just gave you know, such a, a strong signal mm. to the ordinary Chinese people mm. and also to the world. Mm. You mentioned that this is a showcase of mm. a strong Chinese mm -hmm. uh, Navy. This brings us to uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, very words at this uh, naval parade. He said, building a strong Navy has never been more urgent mm -hmm. than today. Mr. Xu, why is the urgency? 
Well, if you look at the uh, South China Sea, of course, uh, we see there are disputes, territorial disputes, but also there are uh, aircraft carrier by the United States mostly, and the excuse of uh, fr freedom of navigation. Mm. So that's uh, obviously their goal is very clear to challenge the Chinese claim, to challenge their uh, Chinese territory uh, integrity here. And also remember, we just launched this uh, Belt and Road Initiative, basically connecting China through Southeast Asia, South Asia, East Africa, uh, European. Uh, continent over there. You need, you have basically in interests, uh, investment from the Chinese side in every corner of the world. Mm. We need a strong army, we need a strong navy to protect our interests and mm. our personnel. I think uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, you have to keep the pace of economic development. Mm. And uh, Mr. Xu, I think it's necessary to put this uh, military parade into a historical context. We know that modern Chinese history was written with some heavy chapters of Chinese nation fighting against the foreign aggression and unfortunately most of uh, those foreign aggressions were coming from the sea. That's true. So, uh, do you think this can explain that common Chinese people can relate to the development of China's naval Absolutely. Policy? This is a domestically. I would say if you uh, say like signals uh, external and domestic and for the Chinese people probably for the first time for a lot of people mm. you see you know we suffered the so-called uh, hundred years of humiliation since the 1840s uh, being invaded by Western powers and uh, how powerless uh, you know China was once for uh, many many years mm. and now we can say like a, you know in increasing confidence in safeguarding our own interests mm. but also remember China is one of the only five permanent members of the UN Security Council that still has the task to reunify the motherland mm -hmm. to uh, defend the territorial integrity mm -hmm. and uh, you know all the more pressing the issue to do, to build a strong navy a strong mm -hmm. uh, military here mm -hmm. what's your take Mr. yeah this is uh, actually a requirement for our development uh, for, for the whole country and if you look at the parade you can find some shining points for example uh, this is actually a system demonstration now in terms of the fighting vessels you can see uh, the destroyer frigates submarine and in terms in terms of the aircraft, you can see the you know, bombers, jet fighters, and uh, electronic uh, warfare you know, plants. So this is actually a system construction already there. Mm. And the second, I think, the doctrine change. This time, our Navy you know, has adopted uh, uh, aircraft carrier-oriented uh, uh, operation doctrine. Mm. That means uh, aircraft carrier should be the core of the a future you know, operation in the sea mm -hmm. and uh, in the operation other than war. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third shining point, I think, is the high spirits. You know, the soldiers, mm -hmm. the sailors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, during the parade gave such an uh, you know, impressive, mm -hmm. you know, echo to the requirement or to the address mm -hmm. uh, from our President Xi Jinping. So uh, there are a lot of shining points uh, during this parade. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned a lot about uh, the aircraft carrier mm -hmm. uh, uh, Liaoning, and we noticed uh, that uh, during this naval parade, uh, there mm -hmm. was a flight training, flight training mm -hmm. uh, of uh, aircraft on board the Liaoning mm -hmm. aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of this kind of training? What does it demonstrate? Yeah, actually, Liaoning, uh, you know, the aircraft carrier, the first aircraft carrier for China, uh, actually is an uh, experimental and a training uh, platform for our future aircraft carrier construction. But after at least uh, uh, four or five years, Liaoning actually uh, has got the operational capability in the high sea. Mm. And uh, in recent years, we have witnessed the uh, patrolling you know, the jails uh, just uh, uh, surrounding the area of uh, Taiwan Island. And so all those activities were conducted in the form of a strike group rather yeah. than a single we, uh, aircraft uh, carrier, right? Yeah, we call it a battle group, uh, including one aircraft carrier, at least uh, two or three destroyer, two or three uh, frigates, and uh, one or two submarines. Because an uh, aircraft carrier is uh, only a platform. Mm -hmm. It, sh it should have, you know, uh, some strong defense first, and so it can, you know, carry out the air strike and uh, the uh, air operation uh, in the future. So, mm -hmm. it, an aircraft car carrier battle group should have such a, you know, uh, strong team mm -hmm. 
to defend the uh, platform and to carry out the operation in the high sea. What about another form of a striking force that is the nuclear submarine, strategic nuclear submarine? Have you yeah. noticed any development during this naval parade? Yeah, at uh, this time at least uh, two submarines were there. And uh, I'm sure uh, this is just uh, one part of our strategic uh, navy uh, because, you know, the nuclear capability, I mean, the nuclear uh, strategy uh, from China, not only uh, by the rocket uh, forces, but also uh, from the sea-based mm -hmm. platform, that means the uh, strategic submarine, and which gave the uh, country, I mean, give China more strong deterrent capability mm -hmm. and according to our uh, military our nuclear strategy we just only you know gave a response to any uh, nuclear strike against our country mm -hmm. we we call it non first use policy and uh, mr Xu, uh, what's your readout of the chinese public's uh, reaction to uh, these uh, outstanding features of this naval parade well just as you pointed out uh, obviously ordinary chinese they feel they are very much related to this uh, parade mm -hmm. navy parade and also the military training and i'm not a, a military expert but what i can see is like uh, if you compare the chinese military uh, to say the u.s or russian uh, forces over there you see there are still a gap we need to keep up with we need to catch up with for example like the training of and also uh, the uh, battle experience or real battle experience that's something uh, you know our forces are lacking because basically over the past 60 40 uh, 70 years we never fought any war uh, uh, around our borders or you know away from this country no so we need a lot of training I think you know for a lot of people when they see the parade of these warships of the helicopters of the aircraft carriers you know this uh, the pride and you feel proud of being a member of this nation you know, it's not military force still we are lagging behind you know, compare with the US they have like um, you know uh, uh, more than 12 uh, aircraft carrier we only have one basically for this training uh, purpose so still far away for us to catch up with them but if you look at how uh, the, the, the long way we have been through from basically a very weak power mm -hmm. until today that's something I think every chance uh, could feel proud of mm. but uh, uh, on the other hand uh, building a strong Navy mm -hmm. I think it's more than just a comparison or catching up. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think uh, national interest should come first as well, Mr. Tom? Yeah, I think our national interest actually has been expanded to the outside world. For example, how can you define your economic boundary? Not only the territory by geographic you know, a definition, this is actually a very large you know, uh, definition for our boundary. Mm -hmm. If you have some you know, overseas Chinese uh, doing the business in for them it in just the as Mr. Shu uh, just uh, mentioned uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in, in the Middle East. Actually, uh, uh, a recent uh, very popular film called a Red Sea Operation, just yes. to show our Navy yeah. you know, carried such a very important uh, uh, evacuation from uh, the war zone. And this is a very important part for China to go abroad. According to our Navy uh, strategy adopted in 2015, we should have the capability to uh, you know, defend our uh, offshore sea and also to give the protection in the high sea. So I, I, our country actually gave new requirement as President Xi you know, mentioned during the parade oh. that this is actually a very long way for China to have a world-class Navy. Mm. And since you mentioned a time, a specific time, we know since 2015, uh, we noticed that in the press release of this naval parade, mm -hmm. uh, it said many advanced models mm -hmm. were developed mm -hmm. or uh, commissioned into Navy service mm -hmm. after the 18th CPC National Congress. That mm -hmm. means since 2012. Sure, yeah. So what has changed domestically and internationally? Uh, in the past six years? Uh, first, I should say, uh, you know, in the 18th uh, CPC National Congress, uh, the Chinese Communist Party adopted a uh, very important strategy that is to construct uh, strong maritime power, uh -huh. uh, which means, you know, first, uh, it is to maintain or safeguard our maritime interest. Second, is to give uh, good exploration of the sea. And the third is uh, the maritime protection. So, in order to have such a capability, I'm sure a strong Navy is very 
you know, important for the uh, realization of such a, a strategy, ambitious uh, you know, plan to, be, to become a, a strong maritime power. Right, so uh, let's talk about the big picture, Mr. Xu, Xi Jinping, the guiding principle. Xi Jinping thought on building a, a strong armed uh, forces. Uh, how do you think this guiding principle has been embodied in this naval parade? Oh, well, uh, you know, if you look at the past five years, mostly it's about the military overhaul, we call it military reforms. Uh, you know, obviously the progress is very impressive, as the parade has shown to the whole country. Uh, this, the review itself is somehow like a school, uh, like a school card report to the nation, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, to present the seed to the nation, like how much progress we have made. So the emphasis has been shifted to mostly about effectiveness and combat readiness uh, instead of size. Remember, we used to be have the largest size, mm. uh, largest uh, number of forces in so the world. So you need quantity and you also need quality. Yeah, to quality. We mm. now pay more attention to quality, to the effectiveness, to whether uh, the ability to win the war and uh, the uh, uh, you know, military capability mm. uh, in any situation basically prepare for the worst to defend the interests of the nation. Well, gentlemen, we'll be getting back to you mm. right after this. You're watching Dialogue on CGTN. Stay with us. So, gentlemen, mm. let's uh, continue our discussion on the largest ever naval parade in the history of the People's Republic of China. So, we've mm. seen the achievement made so far by the Chinese Navy. But, Mr. Deng, what about next stage development? What could be the main focus of the Chinese Navy? Uh, you know, actually, it's a very hard uh, job for the for any country to have a strong mar maritime power and uh, of course, Chinese Navy I, I think is uh, uh, under its way. Why for example, you, you should have a lot of money mm. and you should have a lot of uh, uh, industry uh, and, uh, uh, capability. Mm. Uh, we're lucky that China actually has got such a capability. For example, our uh, industry, you know, very complete uh, set, gave, just gave very you know, strong support to uh, for the construction of the hardwares mm -hmm. of our Navy and also... What about some core technologies? Uh, I think for the engine. Mm. Actually, if you look at the uh, engine, uh, uh, every, every you know, uh, in, in the car, you, you cannot see you know, the engine w was made in China. Mm -hmm. So this is a very tough job for, for our industry you know, uh, to give such a uh, a strong support, but we are lucky, as we, we mentioned just now, we have a complete set of the industry in you know, different uh, departments just gave the, uh, their produ production uh, and that's the reason why China, uh, ha you know, in recent years has got such a fast speed to get so many mm. fighting vessels and uh, uh, fight aircraft uh, and also the uh, other you know, logistic support uh, facilities for the military. So this is a very important, but I think uh, another important uh, uh, issue or challenge for a strong Navy is to have a very you know, proper doctrine. If China is really going to in the high, fight in the high sea or just uh, to maintain you know, in the offshore area for the country, this is actually a challenge. We should uh, think about it. We should be very careful to have such a uh, uh, capability uh, construction. You mentioned just now, this is not an uh, issue of quantity. Mm. This is actually an uh, issue of quality. Quality construction is very important for modern Navy. And the system-to-system -system, uh, confrontation should be the number one job for any services in mm. the Armed forces. Let's talk about some specific examples. For example, China's first uh, uh, homemade uh, mm -hmm. aircraft uh, carrier, mm -hmm. uh, are expected uh, to uh, run into trial uh, very soon. And mm -hmm. also the uh, O55 mm -hmm. destroyer, mm -hmm. which is could be called the largest mm -hmm. in the world. Tell us more about uh, these uh, next stage developments. Yeah, as we expected for you know, at least uh, several years, I, I think the Chinese made. Uh, on the first Chinese made aircraft will be on try in recent days. This is a very important signal. I think this is also a transition in a step for our uh, industry and for our government, for our Navy to have a real strong you know, aircraft carrier, some you know, a nuclear powered uh, aircraft carrier which gave a long range and which gave a long time, a long period of time in service. So I think the, fir the first the Chinese made uh, aircraft carrier is a uh, uh, transition 
for our new uh, modern uh, Navy. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Xu, let's uh, talk about uh, geopolitics. What do you think a Chinese, uh, strong Chinese Navy mean for geopolitics, especially in the South China Sea and for China's neighbors? Well, I would say, um, you know, like if you have a strong navy, basically that will serve as a strong deterrence for any um, provocation uh, from other uh, like powers, especially outside of this region. Uh, you know, like if you look at the South China Sea, uh, among the disputed uh, uh, basically parties like China, Vietnam, Malaysia, and other parties here, we basically reached the agreement, and uh, the South China Sea has been very peaceful uh, since starting late last year. But uh, you know, what are the military activities? Mostly from the United States, aircraft carrier one after the other, right? Uh, you know, under the name of in the free navigation. Uh, this creates a lot of, uh, let's say, um, instability, and we have to respond as the uh, one of uh, um, the regional power here, let's say, uh, which the maintain peace is not only serving the Chinese interests, but also the interests of, say, neighboring countries, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, because we are focusing on developing our own economy, focusing on improving people's living standards. We don't want to bring a war, the war like in Syria, you know, somehow like to this region. That's horrible. We want to maintain peace and stability. A stronger power actually will deter uh, you know, any like a thinking, uh, such thinking uh, to invade, to interfere in this uh, regional affairs. And also, just as you mentioned earlier, the reunification of the mm -hmm. motherland. We know that uh, mm -hmm. this fleet will uh, go to Taiwan Strait and carry out live fire mm -hmm. drills mm -hmm. on April the 18th. Mm -hmm. Mr. What do you think is the key message here? Yeah, uh, actually, this is a routine exercise. You know, each year, especially during the springtime. Uh, the season is very good for the military drill in the sea and uh, I think the position or the area for the drill just gave a strong signal to uh, the leaders in Taiwan and to the leaders in the United States that China actually has been very determined to defend its uh, integrity and its sovereignty and I'm sure uh, such a drill will give some, you know, a strong signal to the leaders in, in Taiwan and uh, also in the United States. Mm -hmm. And since you've mentioned uh, this, the United States recently have passed the Taiwan Travel Act mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also uh, granted a marketing mm -hmm. license mm -hmm. for submarine technology transfer to uh, uh, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Do you think the U.S. is picking up the Taiwan card again and more often yeah. uh, yes. in recent days? Uh, yes, uh, since uh, you know, uh, President Donald Trump took the office as the President of the United States, the situation in Crown Taiwan Strait uh, has been deteriorated. Uh, first, I should say, just because of uh, Madam Tsai, you know, reject, denied to recognize the uh, one China policy and uh, uh, the consensus on 92, and uh, uh, the situation actually, I, I mean, the exchanges uh, Crown Taiwan Strait almost, uh, you know, has been suspended at this moment. And uh, the United States, of course, uh, President Donald Trump would like to take Taiwan as bargaining chip uh, to have some more benefits from other you know, areas, for example, trade and from the uh, cooperation uh, in the Korean Peninsula. Uh -huh. So I think uh, Donald Trump would like to do something in this regard. And uh, the politicians, not only uh, the President of the United States, I mean Donald Trump, uh, some you know, uh, senators or, or representatives in the Capitol Hill, mm. they would like to play the game because uh, they have already taken China as the main challenge mm. uh, for the you know, uh, United States. Mm. So they would like to have some you know, troublemaking mm. in, in that area. So mm. they at the jail. The coming year, of course, will give some strong signal that China is very determined to defend its uh, national interests. I think yes, that, that basically explains why we need a strong navy. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there are people they are seeking independence in Taiwan. For example, very senior politician basically said, oh, "I'm a worker for independence." <laughs> basically, they are declaring independence of uh, of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So, and also the top leader of Taiwan refusing, uh, still up to now, refused to acknowledge the One China principle and uh, the 1992 consensus. That's the foundation for peace and stability across the Taiwan Streets. Mm -hmm. If that foundation is 
gone. And then what we are going to see is instability and basically the pause of the uh, whole uh, standstill of the uh, Taiwan economic growth. Let's see, we, you know, it's, it's not that we are trying to fight with Taiwan here. I mean, if they are trying to create this trouble, uh, seeking like a U.S. so-called tribal act mm. or, you know, uh, submarine technology to defend Taiwan, so-called, if that's a situation, at the, the, uh, the, you know, across Taiwan situation will get uh, worsened mm. and worsening, that would be a huge headache, uh, I mean, for Taiwan and also for the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the United States is uh, ready somehow like to know the benefits with China, relations, uh, you know, benefits from the relation with China, with the mainland, uh, obviously is outwitting you know, the, co the contact with the Taipei, right? right? So they are playing the cards and I think they are doing something beyond playing the cards. Obviously they are strengthening the defense of Taiwan. So I think we should send a strong signal to, uh, to Washington. You should never underestimate our determination for the reunification of the country. Right, and Mr. Tern, um, let's talk about the role of the Navy and China's mm -hmm. international mm -hmm. responsibilities. You were in the Navy yeah. and earlier you just mentioned this uh, movie, a mm -hmm. blockbuster in China, Operation mm -hmm. Red Sea. It's it's actually uh, not about combat, it's about mm -hmm. evacuation of Operation Chinese citizens yes. uh, overseas mm -hmm. and we can mm -hmm. see that in recent years uh, Chinese Navy have particip participated mm -hmm. in uh, international patrol, uh, anti-piracy missions and humanitarian missions uh, since we've also uh, mm -hmm. seen this hospital ship Peace yeah. Ark. Yeah. Tell us more about this. Yeah, this is actually a requirement from the international community. According to the uh, resolution adopted by UN Security Council, China has already sent uh, at least 29 uh, task forces to Aiding Bay to fight against the uh, terrorism there and uh, gave the protection uh, for more than I think 6,000 uh, commercial uh, cargo ships uh, in that area. This is actually a public product for, uh, for China to give the international community. And, uh, and do you I think uh, the Chinese Navy will take more such uh, yeah. missions in the future? Yeah, this is actually a requirement from the international community. We uh, you know, we, we used to say this is actually an uh, army of peace, of uh, justice, of uh, uh, good, you know, uh, charming, you know, uh, policy. And sure, China will increase its uh, presence in some, you know, very sensi sensitive area, for example, Aiding Bay, as a requirement of the United Nations. This is an international requirement. So China will play a more and more important role in maintaining peace and stability, not only for the Chinese uh, themselves, but also for the international community. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. And that's it for this edition of Dialogue on CGTN. I'm Pandu in Beijing. Bye-bye.